after a couple days of drying, you're going to have these spots nice and dry. Hopefully those are filled. If they're not, we'll uh, sand them off, put a little more in there, and do it again. That's looking pretty good. The next step we're going to do is I'm going to take this over to the drum sander, and we're going to worry about smoothing out the outside. We don't actually want to sand this down very much at all on these parts here. Now this part, we could sand down a lot more. Why is that? So if we sand down the bottom and the top, then we're going to affect the fit of the box. If we sand down out here, it's not going to affect the fit at all. see here I've already sanded quite a bit there's one dark band there one even darker one there as I sand this bottom those are gonna come off that's just burning from the bandsaw blade so as I sand this those are gonna come off I don't want to sand this too much or else I'm gonna increase the gap between this and the actual box and you can see we have some holes here that I'm gonna to have to plug and fill with some putty All right, let's get back to finishing this off we go now everything nice and clean all right next step now we're gonna have to sand down these pieces that we filled in last time and maybe touch up one or two other spots that I'm noticing And there you can see our holes on the top are filled. In fact, I can't even tell where they were. So yeah, with that done, we can test fit our drawer. And that fits nicely. It looks like we got rid of all of the gaps. Okay, things don't always go as planned. This is a prime example of that. 
I want to give uh, the box a nice round over on all the sharp edges just like this. So I don't have the proper router bit for it. So this, I don't believe I used a router bit either. So the next plan is to grab a variety of my sanding discs and sandpaper. Get some of my pieces here. And we're just gonna round over all the edges. I don't wanna go crazy on it. I wanna keep them nice. I just don't want them to be sharp. And uh, this will actually do that a lot more effectively than the router cable. Router cable just would have been a lot faster and efficient. So let me grab the box and we're gonna start doing this step. So what I wanna do right now is I'm going to remove this backing paper, this template paper that we put on here. And see now, this is the reason we put the tape on and then we glued the pattern to the tape. We didn't really want the glue on the wood. It's not a big deal if you get glue on the wood, but it takes a lot more effort to get that off than it does just to peel this blue tape off. I'm going to start with a pretty rough grit. This is a 60 grit. And this is going to be to start breaking these corners down. I don't want them as sharp as they are. It's not comfortable to grab it. Uh, we're gonna make them nice and nice and rounded over. So just put your pad right on there and then you can start sanding. So I'm gonna make sure I kind of round over. I don't want to just give it a chamfer. If I wanted a 45 degree angle, I could just hold it like this and do this. I want to give it a rounded over profile. Already, that's a lot nicer. So this is still sharp up here. On the inside it's sharp. Here it's good. So I'm just gonna go around and do this for a while. Got to do it to inside and outside, front and back, and then we're gonna have also do it on the outside of the drawer. I might even do it to the inside pieces right here. There we go, one side is done. I'm not gonna make you watch this, but I'm gonna do the other side as well. And I'm gonna do all the angles on the drawer. So we're gonna move on to 120 grit. We're gonna do the whole box, except for the inside here and inside the drawer because those are gonna get flocked. And once we're done with the 120 grit, making sure everything is nice and smooth, we're gonna move on to a 220. 220 is going to give us enough that we can put a nice oil on here and it's going to have a good feel to it. I'm not going to make you watch that. It's just more sanding. And after sanding down to 220, we have 
a very nice finish on here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to work on is making a drawer pull. I'm going to take this piece that came out of the drawer uh, and I'm going to take a piece right from there, maybe go a little bit into the plywood and that's going to closely match the grain on the front of the drawer. So we've got our drawer pool uh, cut out. I want to reshape it a little bit on the drum sander. And we're going to make sure that it's nice and smooth to go in our box. Got a nice shape on here. Uh, I kind of had an idea to put a little curve there and an outside curve here. And on the back, I went ahead and beveled all four corners, or all four sides rather, and that's going to give us a reveal. So we're going to glue this portion onto the box, and then we're going to have a little bit of a shadow from that from that chamfer right there. I'm going to now take some 120. And just like the box, I'm going to break up these edges a little bit. We're going to be grabbing this to open our drawer, so we're not going to want a sharp edge on this wood. I'm just going to take the front. We're going to keep moving it in circles so we don't get really bad gouges, sandpaper lines. nice and smooth. And you break up that corner just a little bit more. Here. Perfect. So now I can move on to the 220. And that just feels like glass now. We're ready to go ahead and put this on. Okay, we've reached the point where We've got the drawer completely sanded down. We've got our drawer pool completely sanded down. So I just want to find where I like this pool the best. You could actually put it at the top if you like. If you got a heavy drawer, you could put it at the bottom to help pull out the weight. Um, I'm going to put it as dead center as I can. I'm going to pull out my favorite flavor of glue. I don't want to go crazy here. I don't want a whole bunch of uh, squeeze out. So we're just going to put a little dab. And I'm going to use my finger to try to spread that out as evenly as possible. You can take a little bit off. Okay. Still want to have coverage, but I don't have to come up to every corner perfectly when we put it on there it should squeeze out enough that it covers the whole bottom. So. Now let's get it back in place without getting that glue everywhere. Let's see. Okay. I have a very specialized clamp for this kind of glue up called my Paduk block clamp. Here it is. This is just a block of paddock or Paduk, however you want to say it. And I'm going to go ahead and 
get down here so I can see what I'm doing. Just going to balance that on top of there. Try not to move it around too much. I really don't want that glue everywhere. Make it easier this way. And see if we can get the balance on there. Perfect. That will be plenty of pressure to get this little drawer pull on here. So we're gonna let that set up for an hour or two. I'm gonna clean up my work area and get this glue taken care of. And then we'll come back to it when this is ready. Okay, our little drawer pull is on there nice and sturdy now. So this is my previous box. And uh, I originally thought that I had used Danish oil with this. But now I remember I actually used a white bond Minwax Poly for that. Um, I want to try something different this time. So I'm going to go for the clear satin spray poly from Minwax and we'll see how that works out here. Well, welcome to another episode of That Was A Bad Idea. So I tried to use that poly on here, the spray poly from Minwax. After about a week of drying, it was just still kind of tacky on here. I don't believe there's anything wrong with Minwax spray poly. I feel like that's just probably a really old can. I don't, I don't have any recollection of how long ago I bought that. So I'm gonna blame that for the time being. It took me about three hours, but I went ahead and re-sanded every piece of the box. So there's no finish left on here. We're gonna go back to my tried and true method, which is just Minwax uh, spray lacquer. This stuff's great. You don't have to really spray in between coats, though it can help a little bit. I like to go with the clear satin. Uh, it's just like a satin look on some of my projects. And so we're going to redo that, but we're going to use this instead. So I'm going to apply this similar to the same way I was applying the spray poly. I'm going to give it a coat, and then I'm going to wait about 5-10 minutes to make sure it's dry. Do that three times, and then I'm going to let it cure. I'm going to start with the sides and the tops later on. Well, actually, I'll do the bottoms first. I'll set that back up on the triangles. We'll give the bottoms a couple more coats when everything else is finished. Here we go. Okay, well, that coat is dry to the touch. It's only been about five minutes. We're gonna go ahead and put a second coat on now. By the way, it's worth mentioning that you should have your door or a window or something open during this process. If you don't, you should use an organic respirator, something that can handle fumes. I have one right here that I like to use. You want to see the filters? 
worked. That is rated for organic organic sprays. That would work for the lacquer or the poly, anything that would be in the air from these aerosols. Uh, today, it's really nice outside, so I just have the window open. And uh, when I'm not recording, I have a fan blowing out there. So it's actually pretty effective for this. Okay, I'm just finishing a third coat on the bottom of the box. I want to make sure I get all the parts that didn't get quite covered yet. I also had to make sure I got right under the handle. The drawer pull had a little bit of a dry spot there that wasn't receiving anything. But that's the third coat. After this, we're going to check, see how it is, and go from there. Okay, once you have at least three layers of lacquer, I went for actually about five or six on this. Uh, we're going to get rid of all the little nubs that have developed in here. There's little dust particles, anything that's floating in the air could have got caught in it. And uh, I don't really, I prefer to have more of a satin look and this is super glossy at the moment. So I'm gonna take a piece of, just, this is just part of a, a lunch bag, just brown paper. I'm just gonna kind of go around and knock down a little bit of that shine. And this will also take out any of those little nibs that might be in the finish. done that is a very nice finish achieved in about an hour compared to the several days I was waiting on the spray poly to cure that's looking really amazing right now uh, you can even see a little bit of flame in the walnut here a little bit of a pattern uh, next step is going to be to flock the box